with my sunglasses on. I'm Jack Nicholson. Without them, I'm fat and 60. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I would still recognize Jack without his sunglasses. That being said, his point is this. Sunglasses can turn most outfits around. Now, I paraphrased Victoria there because I'm not going to recommend heels for the majority of you guys, although the right pair of boots can do wonders. But gents, the right pair of sunglasses, it can make or break an outfit. And the style of sunglasses that have been synonymous with cool for almost 100 years, the classic and timeless aviator. Now, what exactly are aviator sunglasses? So the first key distinguishing feature is going to be the shape of the lens. For the classic styles, we're going to see a tear dropped shape that fills the eye socket. As for the frame, it's usually made with a thin metal. It's going to have a double, sometimes a triple bridge, a minimalist adjustable nose pad, and a bayonet style earpiece or adjustable metal band that fits around the ears. Oh, and the classic styles are made to be worn under headgear. Now that seems pretty simple, right? But if that's the case, then why are aviators so damn stylish. Seriously, if a guy asked me what one pair of sunglasses would I recommend for him to wear to look better, it's going to be aviators. And gents, as you know, there's a wide variety of different styles of sunglasses out there. Wayfarers, club masters, sporty sunglasses, and every season we see new trends, new styles popping up. But aviators, for almost a hundred years, these have been the epitome of cool. From Mick Jagger to Robert Redford to Warren Beatty, Michael B. Jordan, Shah Rukh Khan, Tom Cruise, Pappy Boyington, Lenny Kravitz. When it comes to looking cool and functionality, doesn't matter if you're a musician, if you're a World War II pilot, aviator sunglasses are where it's at. Now, before I lay out the five reasons of why aviator sunglasses are so damn stylish, let's talk about their history. So, aviator sunglasses were first developed in 1936. There were some prototypes before that, but it was 36 that they got them out there to the pilots in the United States Army Air Corps. Now, the company Bosch and Lom developed them because at high altitudes, pilots were having trouble seeing. The idea is to have protective eyewear that could protect them from the UV rays. Now, in 1937, they started selling them to the general public. Again, they're going after aviators. They're going after sportsmen, people that wanted to be able to see in adverse conditions. So, if anyone's ever been fishing, you know that actually having polarized sunglasses, you're going to be able to see through the water and be able to better see the fish. They had green versions, the G15s. They also had brown lens versions, the B15s. Now, as you can imagine, for many military contractors, once World War II picked up, all of a sudden, production levels skyrocketed. So, from 1940 to 1945, we had millions and millions of pairs of sunglasses produced by Bosch Alam for the United States Army Air Corps. Now, despite the fact that they were made specifically for pilots, anyone that served in the military knows that things get traded, things get passed around, things disappear in the military. And all of a sudden, you had other people in the Army picking up these sunglasses, Navy pilots talking about this, them going around on boats. And next thing you know, on the cover of Time Magazine, we've got General Douglas MacArthur retaking the Philippines and guess what he has right there on his face? A pair of sunglasses. Now, how did he acquire those sunglasses? Who knows? But it did all of a sudden affect sales. All of a sudden, everybody wanted to be like this war hero. Now, eventually, MacArthur would disappear from the limelight. You know, Eisenhower made sure they yeah, bring him in bounds. But 1950s, 1960s, we started seeing musicians pick up where the military had left off. During this time period, we see iconic trendsetters like Elvis Presley, Marlon Brando, and the Beatles wearing aviator sunglasses. In fact, the king, Elvis Presley, had a huge collection of sunglasses. Most of them aviators. The guy just went and he just started getting these things all decked out, a lot of them custom made. But when people see their favorite musicians, wearing these glasses, other people wanted them. Again, it kept driving up sales and they started to enter the masses. It just wasn't for military enthusiasts. It wasn't just for people that like musicians. All of a sudden, the average person started discovering the benefits of wearing sunglasses. In the 1970s, we saw the rise of a number of new manufacturers. Initially, it was just Ray-Ban, but eventually Carrera, Serengeti, and Randolph Engineering all entered the market. And this was really a great thing because all of a sudden, they started introducing new materials, new builds, new styles. Now, for a few years, things were cool, but in 1986, the movie Top Gun was released. Tom Cruise wearing a pair of Ray-Bans. Ray-Bans reported that their sales shot up by 40% solely because of the placement in that movie. Now, as we entered the 90s, the fashion industry, looking for more ways to monetize and to bring a little bit of bling to things, started grabbing aviators and houses like Gucci, Giorgio Armani, and Ralph Lauren started incorporating variations of aviator sunglasses with all types of bling into their runway shows. And this continued into the 2000s. Again, Gucci's leading the way here, but Dolce & Gabbana, Prada, all of them started jumping in because they realized, hey, I can take these. They don't cost 
cost that much and we can knock up the price and people will be crazy enough to buy them. And again, as more manufacturers get into this, all of a sudden we see mirrored lenses, gradient lenses, various types of specialty lenses, even for sportsmen, all of a sudden started popping on the market. And in the last 15 years, we've seen the rise of the influencer, not just on social media, but also guys like Kanye West, David Beckham, Tom Hardy, all of these guys love their aviators. And so this draws in guys that want to dress like them. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about specifically what are aviators. In general, this is a classic pair of aviators, but you're also going to see different shapes of lenses. Now, the teardrop is the original because as I mentioned earlier, it actually fits right there in the eye socket. And remember, they were originally developed for protection of the eyes from UV, harmful UV rays at a high altitude. But over the last 50 years, we've seen a wide range. We've seen the lenses squared up. We've seen them slightly become a bit larger. Other ones become smaller. In general, because most of you guys aren't using them for the functional purpose of flying at a high altitude to protect your vision, you're going to see different options out there. And I would say all of these fall within the aviator realm. You're also going to see different colors of lenses. I've got a graphic right here that breaks out all the different colors and the uses and the purposes, which I will link to down in the description of today's video that breaks out all the different types of sunglasses and information on that. But in general, if you're buying sunglasses from a reputable seller, they're going to be able to protect your eyes from the harmful UV rays. Now, some of you guys may be asking, well, what about polarized sunglasses? Should I always get those or are non-polarized okay? Now, polarization is where they treat the lens with a chemical that's going to prevent light rays from coming at certain angles. So again, if you're an angler, if you're out there fishing and you want to be able to see in the water, polarized lenses are going to be great. However, for day-to-day -day use, I'm not going to recommend them because it makes it difficult to read LED screens. And when it comes to UV protection, they don't really add too much and they can scratch easier. Now, what about mirrored lenses? To me, this is simply a stylistic choice. Mirrored lenses, I find in general, are easier to scratch, but they do have that cool factor. People are going to see themselves. It better hides the eyes, but gradient style and, you know, just simply dark sunglasses in different colors. Um, yeah, really depends on what you're looking for. And really quick, let's talk about the width of the sunglasses. You're going to see three main sizes out there. You're going to see small, which range from about 52 to 55 millimeters in width. You're going to see mediums, which range from about 55 to 58 millimeters in width. And then large frame sunglasses are going to be anything over 58 millimeters in width. So when it comes to choosing a size, know the size of your face. But in general, if you think of it like a bell curve, the majority of men are going to fit right in there with the medium size. And specifically on the lens shapes, again, we're going to see the classic teardrop. You're also going to see what's known as the navigator. So the navigator is going to be like the classic teardrop, except it's going to be squared off at the edges. You're also going to see a sporty wrap, and this is going to wrap around the face a bit more. A little bit harder to find, but I like it, especially if you're going to be wearing aviators when you're out cycling, if you're out running, if you want something, and they're usually made from a lighter material. Again, made specifically for sport. All right, gents, really quick question for you. What is your style score? Gents, if you don't know your style score, how do you know how to improve your style? Well, gents, I've got you covered down in the description of today's video. I'm linking over to our free style score quiz at Real Men Real Style. There's absolutely no cost to you and you're able to quickly figure out where do you want to improve your style, where are you doing good, and we give you an exact number with feedback on how to do it. Just go over to Real Men Real Style, my website. You're going to find tons of useful infographics, articles that go into a lot more detail than I can cover in these videos. So if you just want free information, good stuff, go check out what we're doing at Real Men Real Style and use that link to go find out what your style score is. Now, at this point, gents, let's get into it exactly. Why are aviators so damn stylish? First up, that timeless design. When you go look at the original specs, the original aviators, they are very similar to what is being sold today. In fact, if if you were to find a pair of vintage aviators, you could wear them and they would still look great. And that's why I love them because you can spend good money on a good pair of aviators and you don't have to worry. This is a timeless design that will still be in style in a decade. In fact, a quick note, that's called the Lindy effect. You look at how long something has been in circulation, that kind of gives you an idea of how long it's going to be in circulation going forward. So the fact that we're coming in on a hundred years of aviators tells me that, yeah, these sunglasses are going to be around for another hundred. Next up, let's talk about versatility. So you see men that appreciate the functionality. Pilots all over the world still wear and love their aviators. They got particular brands. And if you've got a particular brand, I would love to hear it down in the comments, your favorite aviator sunglasses. Where do you get them from? But uh, these guys that appreciate functionality, they focus in them. But guys that simply want to look cool, that want to look good. Musicians, actors, 
rock stars, just people that are just out on a hot day, want to look good. Aviators fit the bill. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. You can wear them in a wide variety of situations. It's the versatility of aviator sunglasses that make them so damn stylish. Next up, we've got the connection to iconic figures. So many of us look for inspiration to the past. And we look at maybe a musician, a rock star, a historical figure. And we're like, you know what? I want to dress. I want to look like that. So when you see a picture of Chuck Yeager, the guy that broke the sound barrier, a mate, just a legend in the Air Force, you see him wearing a pair of aviators. Well, I want a pair, right? Or maybe you're a Leonardo DiCaprio fan. You love his movies. You love the way the guy looks in aviators. You want to be able to rock them because we all know that's why he gets those girls that, uh, yeah, his last girlfriend just hasn't been born yet, right? Or let's look at U.S. presidents, U.S. leaders. You've got some more recent examples right here, but let's go even farther in the past. JFK rocking the aviators. You got sports heroes like Lewis Hamilton and Freddie Mercury. Next up, let's talk about how aviators work with so many different face shapes. First up, we've got the oval face shape. If you have this face shape, most sunglasses are going to work for you. Aviators are just boom, going to fit in there, look great. The only thing you want to be careful about is don't go with a pair of aviators that are too small. Rounded face shapes, a little bit harder to wear different styles of sunglasses with, especially ones that can just make you look comical. They basically frame up the face. They give it a more masculine look. And if you've got a round face, aviators are where it's at. Next up, we've got a square face. So aviators bring a bit of softness to the edges. And this is important because you try to wear wayfarers, maybe a little bit over the top, a little bit too square. You bring in aviators, boom, it's just going to complement your square face. Next up, let's talk about the heart-shaped face. Very distinctive because of that hairline dropping right there in the front. But with a heart-shaped face, you want to make sure you go with a pair of aviators that fit perfectly. Don't go with oversized aviators because that can just exaggerate the shape of the face, make that heart look really Really obvious, but no, we want to go with either a smaller pair or a medium sized pair. Again, it's going to work for most men out there. And then let's talk about the cultural influence. So many examples out there of men wearing aviator sunglasses looking amazing. When you see your favorite musician wearing these, all of a sudden you can't tell where his eyes are. He's a man of mystery and you're able to bring that same look to your wardrobe. Yeah, you can find cheap aviators. You can buy expensive ones. Doesn't matter, gents, as long as they look good, as long as the lenses are of good quality to protect your eyes, you can look amazing. You can look more stylish in a pair of aviators. All right, gents, what video to watch next? Well, I got you covered right here with this video, which, uh, yeah, you can tell what it is. Click on it, go check it out. Magically, you'll be taken to this next video, which I promise is amazing. Check it out. Uh, boom, click it right there. That's it.